Hi, in this video, I'll show you how to use Google Finance function to track your stocks. At its most basic, the Google Finance function is typing equal Google Finance and open parentheses and then the stock ticker symbol. And appropriately enough, we can use Google. And you have to put that in quotes, G-O-O-G, -O -O and close parentheses, and you'll get the real-time uh, stock price for Google. Now the Google Finance function is pretty smart in terms of going out to the exchanges to find the stock ticker symbol and the appropriate price. But sometimes you need to put it in because, uh, for example, Google is on NASDAQ and that's the way that you put it in to get that price. Now there are some stocks that are dual listed exchange stocks. Uh, a good example would be the Carnival Cruise Line Company. So they're on the New York Stock Exchange. I believe they're under CUL. and no, that's not right. They're under C, I think it's CCL, CCL under New York Stock Exchange, CCL. And we can look it up. If we look up CCL, that will take us to Carnival Corporation 1945. And that meets that price. So if we look at the London version of the stock, we do L-O-N, it's going to give us a different price, 1239. Let's check the stock price on London, the stock price on the London Exchange. And it's also the same company, Carnival, at $12.39. So just be aware when you are looking for the stock ticker price for the symbol that you may want to put in the exchange here. But for the most part, Google's smart enough to figure out there's not that many dual listed companies. So if we just tried Apple, we'll see that it gives us that price. And for more information about the particular uh, attributes or the arguments that you have put in, these are this is where you can find it. Now, if we wanted to look at the real time or to the up to date that day's type of pricing and the opening price and the closing price you can see that there are a lot of attributes that you can put in so that first thing that attribute the second argument here after the ticker symbol is the attribute which can be either the price uh, by default if you don't put anything in it's going to give you the price you can you can use price open high low volume market cap let's put uh, volume so i'm going to put volume in here and you have to put it within quotes, within the quotes, open, close quotes, volume. I mean the uh, double quotes, press enter, and you're going to get the volume of that day's stock. So there are all these attributes that you can put in there. So, But once we do something and put in a date, let's say, for example, I want to put the price and put in a date. Let's say I, put, I want to put in the date of maybe the somewhere sometime in January 2021, January 3rd. 2021. Okay, close parentheses, press enter. Now you notice that it has kind of given me a different output. See, look, it's a it's even though I entered it in line A1, it's giving me the output in this array, basically a two by two table table format. We'll come back to that later on because this has an impact on how you present the data. But if you wanted to get kind of like historical information, you can use the attribute all and that will give you historical information for a time period. So if I put all here and instead of putting uh, 130, just having this start date, this is the start date. And let's say I want to have a range of dates, start date, let's say end date. And let's, let's say that 2, 3, 2021 is my end date. It's going to create a table for me of all that information. And it's going to give me all of the information here for the historical data, open, close, high, low volume. Now you can see that it's created a table, kind of a matrix here. And this can do it for stocks. So you can see that if we didn't have a date in there and we just wanted the real time data of the price, we could use this first option with the various text that was substitute as this attribute here. Or if we wanted to do kind of more historical and have Google identify the other five um, attributes here, we can have it just say all, or you can just put low instead of all here and you get the low prices. Another thing to do, in addition to stocks, it can do mutual funds. So a very big mutual fund is the Vanguard S&P Index Fund. Uh, that's F V F I N X. Do that. It will give us the Vanguard closing prices for that index. But there's other attributes here. So if I go down to the attributes, where it says for the mutual fund data, I can just change it here. So maybe instead of all, there's different parameters for that attribute. Let's say uh, net assets 
let's do net assets press enter and we can find the net assets there since I've given it a date here I think it's invalidated my dates there so I'm going to delete that date range and close parentheses press enter and you'll see the net assets for uh, today's date and you can see here you can kind of have fun with this where we can say oh let's say we want our return let's do return 52 the 52 week return and then I can click copy and paste that 52 week return we can look at the return 7.73 percent return if we want to do something a little bit more like tracking our stocks, let's say, for example, I wanted to track my stocks. I have a ticker symbol here, and maybe I have price and volume here. I can put in maybe Google, Google, Apple, and maybe Amazon, and maybe Amazon right here. Right? Or maybe something popular now today, GameStop, right? I can do that. I can use the Google function, Google Finance, open parentheses. Let's look lock in my other parameters, my attribute ones. Let's close this. And I'm just going to copy and paste it from here. And I'll take in maybe I've got my price here. For my first entry here, it's going to be the ticker symbol, right? And then I'm going to press the F4 key to lock that in to the column because when I copy it down that's going to be the dollar sign in front of the the letter <laughs> let me get that right and comma let's see what we want to do we want to do the price so we are going to have since I spelled price correctly here I'll just call on that and also press the F4 key to lock in the row so the number the dollar signs in front of the number instead of the letter because I'm going to copy it over down and over so all I need to do is press enter, and then it's going to load, and it's going to take today's price of 1927.51. Now I can copy this over, but what I'm going to do is let me fill out the rest, of it. and maybe I want the high and then the low, right? And then I can, all I can do, all I need to do is just copy this over, and since I had the dollar signs in the right places, it copied it over correctly, and it's picking up the the high from here, that text, the low here, so I didn't have to fill out those arguments there. All I need to do now is just kind of select that, copy it down, and it's going to pick it up for each of the stocks. So pick it up for Apple, and then it'll pick it up for GameStop. And look at GameStop. It's at 90. And that's a big range here from 158 all the way down to 90. So that's a very volatile stock. Now, what we also maybe want to do is chart this. Now, instead of having its own chart way out here for each one of these, we can have an in-cell chart. And those are called spark lines. And so we can do something like maybe... We'll do one for 365 days. Uh, I'll, I'll call this one the last 365. And we're going to use a different function called the sparkline function. So I'll do sparkline, and then we'll choose, take Google Finance, Finance, and then open parentheses. We'll call this and do an F4 to put the dollar sign in front of the A instead. And we're going to take the price. I'll just put price in here. So we're gonna to have to do a start date and end date. So if I click the question mark here, we're gonna have our start date, our start date here, and then our end date. So the start date is going to be, we want the last 365 days. So it's gonna to be today minus 365. I entered my third comma here. And now what was my end date? Well, the end date's today. So the last 365 days, and then close parentheses, close parentheses there, and then that's the spark line parentheses and press enter. And now I'm going to have a little chart here, a little nice little chart to look at the last 365 days, copy that down and I can do a comparison. And you can see the GameStop has been really up on its hair for the, for the last two weeks. Now, if I want to look at a lesser date, maybe the last 30 days, right? Last 30 days, I can just copy that control C to copy, control V to paste, and I'll just change this to three zero. Press enter, and in the last 30 days, let's see what happens. And we're gonna have a comparison of the chart. So in the last 30 days, you can see, in the last about two week to two weeks, it's been on a tear, that particular stock, GameStop. So if you wanted to track a number of stocks using Google Sheets, uh, albeit this is delayed 20 minutes here, as it says right here, the quotes are delayed, you can do it and have your list of stocks and the important attributes that you want 
and have a small little graph to take a look at the last 365 days or last 30 days. Now, in addition to stocks and mutual funds, the Google Finance can also do currency. So let me go into the currency tab here. So let's say, for example, we want to see what the currency rates are for these currencies, the British pound, the Indian rupee, uh, the Japanese yen, the euro, the Canadian dollar, right? We can actually do that. And uh, if you wanted to look at other currencies, of course, it's an ISO standard 4217. And you can look down this page and it'll have, it'll have the three character identification for that currency, the code. So if we go back here, basically what we need to do is type equal Google Finance, open parentheses. And at its basic level, all we actually need to do is type maybe USD. If we didn't have this, if we wanted to hard code it, we can just put USD. And what to do in parentheses, USD, GPP, close quotes, close parentheses, press enter, and it's going to load the exchange rate, right? The proper way to do it is probably just to add the currency text, currency colon that. And that's going to load the same thing because it's going to look out for the currency exchange rate. Now, if we didn't want to hard code it and want to have two columns and just have us enter in the text here, we don't have to put it manually in here or hard code in here. We can actually just have that there and put an ampersand and click, let's close this. Click on the from currency, ampersand to currency, press enter. It's gonna say, give us the same thing here. You can see that it's given us that. If I draw the fill handle down or I move the fill handle down to copy and paste everything else, it's going to give me the latest currency exchange rates for those currencies. $1 to the Indian rupee, to the Japanese yen, the Euro and the Canadian dollar. And those are the current rates. So if we wanted to look at the price from way before, maybe 10 years from before, we're going to have to change a little bit. We're going to look for that currency, price, and then comma, and then the previous date. Let's say 1, 1, maybe 2010. Close quotes, close parentheses. You're going to see we're going to get an error. And this was the, the error that I talked about earlier. Because what it's trying to do is it has created an array. So let's delete all this here. And we're going to run that again. And what happened is it created an array because we added that extra uh, date and looking for the price on that date in 2010. It's created this table, this mini table. This, ta this is a two column table. So this is a two by two table. And what we want to do is we want to get go to the second column, second row to get that data. And so what we need to do is wrap this in an index function. So I'm going to type in index, open parentheses. It's going to take that array and I want the second column and the second row. Close parentheses, press enter, and now we have our data that we want. And all I need to do is just copy it down and we can say we can say conversion rate as of well, actually we can make this more dynamic. We'll we'll say let's put the date here. We'll do 1 1 2010 and if we change this to reflect that cell comma D1, and that has to be an absolute cell reference, so the dollar sign is in front of both the letter and the number, press enter. We can see that we've changed it there. Bring the fill handle down to copy the formula. Let's say, for example, now we want to see what it was in 2020, press enter, and now it went out to the internet, and then it went out to the internet to check these prices. So that's how we can use Google Finance for currency. So you can see it's pretty versatile. We can use it for currency. We can use it for stock and mutual funds. And if we encapsulate it into the sparkline function, you can get these mini in-cell graphs. So that's the Google Finance function. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe.